Hello people, in this video let us look at the classification for leprosy or Hansen's disease, right? This is also called as Hansen's disease. So this is actually Ridley and Joplin classification. And normally, you know what, you should remember two forms of leprosy. You have lepromatous leprosy here. Can you see here? You have lepromatous leprosy and here you have tuberculoid leprosy on this side. So um, is it clear where tuberculoid leprosy is? Here. So you have lepromatous leprosy here. Okay, here you have lepromatous leprosy, it is representing low resistance and here you have tuberculoid leprosy, which is representing high res resistance. So two things if you remember, everything else is easy. You have two types of leprosy, remember, tuberculoid leprosy, right, tuberculoid type, okay, and here you have lepromatous leprosy, lepromatous type, okay. This much did you understand? So leprosy is caused by what? Mycobacterium leprae, you know that, it is caused by a bacteria, that much you know. Now. Basically, between these two, okay, this tuberculoid and lepromatous, you have middle, they have drawn, written one, BB. This is mid border line. This is dimorphic. It is neither here nor there. That much you could understand, right? It's neither here nor there, so it's mid border line, BB. Okay, so you have something called as BT. Now, what is BT? BT means borderline tuberculoid. Somewhere, it is little resemblance to tuberculoid. And what is this borderline lepromatous? BL. Slightly something very similar to lepromatous. Okay, that's all. Very easy, right? TT, BT, BB, BL, LL. So if you know TT, if you know LL, middle you write one BB, there's one BT here, there's one BL here. That's all. Basically, in tuberculoid leprosy, the skin lesions are single. Okay, they are few, fewer lesions, fewer asymmetrical lesions. They are hypopigmented and erythematous macules will be there. So this is a... Uh, there is distinct sensory impairment. So basically, did you understand this tuberculoid uh, leprosy? The skin lesions are single, they are few lesions, asymmetrical, they are hypopigmented, right? They are erythematous macules will be there. They have sensory impairment. Sensory impairment will be there, right? In leprosy. Okay. So basically, you have understood tuberculoid leprosy. And now it is time to understand lepromatous leprosy. Guys, lepromatous leprosy, what happens? This, uh, in this what happens, there is symmetrical multiple nodules, macules, papules, diffuse infiltrates, right? So basically you can see multiple symmetrical lesions are there, the skin lesions, right? The, no the nodular lesions, they will all coalesce, right? And gives a leonine facies, like a lion's face, right? So the lesions, these are hypoesthetic or or anesthetic, okay, they are hypoesthetic or anesthetic, right? But sensory disturbance is not as distinct in as in tuberculosis. So here the sensory disturbance is very significant, okay? Here the sensory, uh, this man you pinch, he will not uh, know it, right? So there is sensory impairment here. But here there is no much sensory impairment. In lepromatous leprosy, he can still feel. Guys, here in uh, tuberculoid leprosy, basically here the person's uh, lepromin test is positive. Lepromin test is positive. This is a good thing. Okay, this is a very good thing. Means this guy is actually resistant. He is going to fight this infection. He has good immune response. Okay, good immune response. That's why they're calling it as high resistance. Okay, is this clear guys? High resistance. So this is about tuberculoid leprosy. Okay, here in lepromatous leprosy, the lepromin test will be negative. It's not a good thing. It is suppressed low resistance. Okay. So lepromin test will be negative in lepromatous leprosy. Okay. So in um, lepromatous leprosy, what will you see in histopathology? Here in histopathology, you will see foamy macrophages, lepra cells, right? Clear zone. All that you will see. In histopathology, you will see foamy macrophages, Lepra cells, clear zones. Clear zones means uh, the dermis is separated from epidermis. Guys, pay attention here. In uh, lepromatous leprosy, the dermis is separated from epidermis by a clear zone. This is a photo of uh, the drawing of our uh, lepromatous leprosy in the lab. So look at this. So basically here you have epidermis, which is a very thin layer epidermis. Then here you have clear space. That is the Grenz zone. Okay. 
Very important, you have to identify when there is dermis and epidermis are separated. So here you have the dermis and here you have the epidermis on top. Both are separated by a clear zone called Grenz zone, right? And inside this um, dermis, they are showing you foam cells, right? Lepra cells, foam cells, okay? So this is about lepromatous leprosy. See tuberculoid leprosy, how it looks under the microscope. And you can see how tuberculoid leprosy is represented in the histology diagram. Here the epidermis is eroded. You can see the epidermis is eroded. You have the same uh, ep epithelioid cell, Langhan joint cell. You have lymphocytes, right? Same thing you are seeing here. But they have not depicted caseous necrosis. Very important, you should remember eroded epidermis, okay? All these standard things about tuberculosis you have already seen. Epithelioid side, Langhan cell, lymphocytes, all that you will write, okay? There's a nerve here. Remember, there's always sensory loss in tuberculoid leprosy. So basically understand here tuberculoid uh, leprosy, the body has uh, immune response, okay? However, in lepromatous leprosy, there is no resistance. Body is not able to have immune response against this, okay? So guys, uh, we are done with the leprosy classification, Ridley-Joplin classification, okay? Bye-bye.